time has come for the filibuster to go, Harry Reid, the former Democratic leader in the Senate, said. It's not a question of whether but when. Photograph by Mark Wilson, Getty The decision by Senate Republicans to jam through the Supreme Court nomination of Amy Coney Barrett in the final days before the election, when they refused even to hold hearings on the nomination of Merrick Garland, in 2016, has brought the dysfunction and the hypocrisy of the Senate to wide public notice. A defense that Republicans have offered Democrats is, you started it. Specifically, they assert that the breakdown began with a decision, in 2013, by then-majority leader Harry Reid, Democrat of Nevada, to lead the effort to abolish the filibuster for lower court judges and other presidential nominees. As President Donald Trump retweeted earlier this month, repeating a message from Senator Lindsey Graham, Harry Reid and Chuck Schumer changed Senate rules to try and stack the courts for Obama. Now it's coming back to haunt them as I predicted. Reid, who retired from the Senate in 2016, has no regrets. For the past two and a half years, he's been battling pancreatic cancer at his home in Las Vegas. In a recent conversation, Reid said that he has been keeping the disease at bay. Mostly, though, he wanted to talk about the Senate, the election, and Donald Trump. I want to get this off my chest, Reid told me, Trump's been saying what's happened to the Senate is all my fault, because of what we did in 2013. But you have to remember what was going on at the time, Obama was president. We had the majority, but we didn't have enough to break filibusters. And the Republicans were filibustering everything. For the first time in history, they filibusted the nomination of a Secretary of Defense, and let's keep in mind that it was Chuck Hagel, a Republican, they filibusted all the sub-cabinet positions, all of his judges. The government couldn't function. So we changed the rule, and I'm glad we did. Reid has a point, especially about judges. Obama had managed to fill two Supreme Court seats in his first term, but by the time he was re-elected Republican filibusters had brought the confirmation of judges to a near total stop. Specifically, in 2013, Obama had three pending nominations for the D.C. Circuit, widely known as the second most important court in the nation, and Mitch McConnell, then the minority leader, was staging filibusters against them all. In response, Reid and his Democratic colleagues changed the rule, so that only a simple majority, instead of 60 votes, was required to close debate on judges and presidential appointees. The three D.C. Circuit nominees were confirmed, as were several dozen other judges before the midterm elections of 2014, when Republicans gained a majority in the Senate. At that point, McConnell almost completely shut down the confirmation of Obama's judges. If we hadn't acted, Obama would have accomplished nothing, Reid said. We had no choice, zero. Since Reid left the Senate, the gridlock there has only intensified. McConnell has used Reid's change in the rules to push through all of Trump's lower court judicial nominations. If Reid hadn't changed the rule when Obama was president, McConnell would have done so under Trump, and Obama would have had virtually no judges confirmed. In order to push through Neil Gorsuch's nomination to the Supreme Court, McConnell led an effort to overturn the right to use filibusters on nominations to the high court. This is why Republicans need only a simple majority, that is, 50 of their 53 members, to confirm Barrett. Vice President Mike Pence would break any tied votes, although his right to do so under the Constitution is not entirely clear. In the Trump years, the Senate has all but stopped passing legislation. In the first two years of Trump's term, when Republicans controlled both houses of Congress, Democrats in the Senate filibustered most legislation. 
Since 2018, when Democrats retook the House, McConnell has largely prevented Senate votes on measures passed by that chamber. For the most part, under McConnell, the Senate has operated only to confirm judges, by majority vote, and to pass budgets. There were brief moments of bipartisanship, when the Senate passed bills to address the coronavirus pandemic, but another bill appears doomed. In light of this gridlock, a question has arisen about what to do if Joe Biden wins the presidency and the Democrats retake the Senate. With a majority but less than 60 votes, will Republican filibusters prevent them from accomplishing anything? I think the time has come for the filibuster to go, and it's going to go. It's not a question of whether but when, Reid told me. There is no legislation passed. There are no amendments voted on. You can't have a legislature that requires 60%. It's outlived its usefulness. But that's not the only structural reform that Reid wants to see passed. Reid was the minority leader in the Senate when McConnell blocked the Garland nomination, on the argument that there should be no Supreme Court confirmations in an election year. Now, of course, McConnell is leading the charge for Barrett. Reid thinks that it's time for some redress for what he regards as the theft of those two seats. Reid was a Senate institutionalist, but now he's ready for the Senate to consider some major changes to the structure of the U.S. government. First of all, the Supreme Court is not a static body. It's not always been nine members, they have had five, eight, different numbers, Reid said. The court's membership has been fixed at nine, by statute, since 1869, he added, I think it's time that we did something after the election, something very publicly. We should hold some hearings, educate the public about this history. We should show that we've changed the number of justices in the past, and we may have to do it again. Let's block ads. Show your love for him. Click the link in description. Thanks for watching.